Hey, I'm Mark Pope, and you are watching BBN Tonight. From your official UK station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight, presented by Blue Oval SK. There's an old song from the 70s. It's by Jefferson Starship. I date myself. It's called Find Your Way Back. It's time for us to find our way back. You can always find your way back home. And it was a homecoming for Mark Pope, who was officially introduced yesterday as the next head coach of the Kentucky basketball program and an awe-inspiring afternoon for the thousands of Kentucky faithful who found a spot inside of a jammed, packed Rupp Arena and for the thousands more who watched from home or streamed our coverage all over the country. Welcome into BBN Tonight. I'm Kinsey Lee. Tonight we're bringing you more on Mark Pope's first day on campus, including fan reaction, words of encouragement from Pope's former teammates, and his own take on recruiting and scheduling. But we'll start with Keith Farmer's one-on-one -on -one interview with the head coach. That's tonight's Big Blue Story, presented by CHI St. Joseph Health. Well, coach, UK men's head basketball coach, you got to be living the dream right now. I am. It, it feels like a dream. This is... Um, it feels like a dream because this is, uh, this is a place I, I love. This is a place that changed my life forever. Uh, it's a place where um, I got to battle with some of my best friends in the whole world and, and be welcomed and, and loved and become family with this incredible fan base. And it has um, always been uh, the best job in the world to me and everybody else in the basketball world. And, and uh, everybody's always known that the opportunity came. I would, I would walk across the country to get here. And, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm super humble about this and super excited about it and can't wait to get going. Well, I'm glad that Mitch brought a plane to get you then. Um, it would have taken longer. This interview might have taken place a, a week from now. <laughs> um, you just had a, a group of fans lined around this building and you jumped out yeah. to get among them. Yeah. What was that like? Um, so here's the thing. I, I learned this early on when I was here at Kentucky. Um, this is this is Kentucky's team. Uh, this is not my team. It's not even our players' team. This is Kentucky's team, and so um, like this is us. It's not me or we. It's us. And so uh, you know we're driving by, and there's people standing out there in line, standing out in the sun, and and like that's our people. And and so it's um, I love it. I love it that, that this community cares this much because. I care this much and our players care this much and and the fact that we get to share that together is different than any other college program in the country. I'm sure right after you got this job I, I know you heard from teammates from Coach Patino. What did all that mean to you? Yeah so it's only the second time in my life in 40 years that Coach Patino's actually said something nice about me. <laughs> it was shocking. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit of an exaggeration but uh, I love Coach so much. Um, you know, I think about the, the impact that Kentucky had on me, and, and he was at the forefront of that, and it was brutal and tough a lot, but he changed me. Like, he literally um, ripped you open and, and reworked you and changed the DNA of the human being that you're made to do. Um, one of the reasons why I've had a chance to do all the things in my life that I've done since then is because he changed me as a human being. And so um, I love him so much. And then, uh, you know, my guys, this 96 crew, we're on a group chat and I can't repeat most of what's said <laughs> on that group chat, but uh, it's, um, these are some of my best friends in the whole world. Uh, some guys that I have so much deep love and affection for because of what we experienced together and how much we suffered and sacrificed and, and bonded together. Uh, it's really special to hear from all those guys. And it's, it's one of the reasons why this is is the greatest job in the world. Where do you go about building this first team? Yeah. And, and do you use some of that dirt from Jeff Shepard to keep Reed here? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna go first with the other stuff and then I'm gonna get to Reed because that might take a while. Uh, so this team, uh, you know, we have super talented guys here that are all trying to figure out what they're gonna do. And so we're, t we've, we've, we're beginning having conversations with them. I love the guys, they're terrific guys and they all have big decisions to make. And then uh, we have a, a really uh, fantastic and fun recruiting class coming in and those guys are all getting to make decisions also. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the, the exact right guys to be here. We'll be extremely active in the portal. Um, I love uh, young players. I love veteran players too because they actually make you better and they can do it fast. And you actually have a chance to see how they play and especially 
especially the unique style of play, the aggressive style of play that we play, Correct. you get a better sense of who's going to really fit and be able to pick it up quickly. Um, and then uh, this Reed Shepard. How about this young man? Uh, Jeff is Jeff is was my my college roommate. I love him so much. Stacy uh, was like, um, she, she, you know, she's she just there's no words for Stacy. She's that good, and uh, what Reed did this year is incredible. And he's a lottery pick right now, um, and it is impossible to turn that down. And he's also um, a Kentucky great, and it's impossible to turn that down. And so, uh, my conversation with Stacy and Shep and Reed are have been and are going to continue to be all about hey, just find your heart, man. Like, just find your heart, and where that is is going to be exactly the right place for him to be. Had the chance to watch you all play this year a couple of times. Is that is that the style of play you're sticking with? Like, it, yeah, I love it. We'll 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 be able to try some different things uh, as we as we put together a different roster, but we'll stay incredibly aggressive offensively. I love it. You know, it, it has become a part of my life. Every analytic leads you to do this. We're kind of pushing the forefront. We're actually really pushing the envelope on making teams guard 27 by 50. That's important to us. It's important to everything we do. Uh, we were the disappointed to be the uh, second highest uh, three-point field goal made team in the country. Uh, we're going to fix that here next year. We will make the most three-pointers in the country. That's, that'll be a staple of our team if we can get there um, because that opens up so much of the floor and that's so important. So we're going to be super, super aggressive offensively. We'll play really, really fast, really, really aggressive. We're also the number four assist team in the country and that's a really important part of what we do to create shots for each other. And on the defensive end, we're going to take big time. We're, we're, we're going to really really, really change it up. Over the last several years, we've got more and more comfortable with um, taking shots, ATOs, uh, defensively ch changing things up, taking personnel changes, and really trying to be disruptive defensively. We got more and more comfortable with it. I love it. I think we can do it here. There's so much more we can go into. We're going to have to sit down again sometime and talk. Uh, did, were you pushing for this to be on the 13th, though? So the 14th. Hey, uh, you know, listen, there's there's no shortage of uh, reality in the fact that the Pope family is diehard Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> I've been kind of dragged along a little bit, but I love it. Uh, you know, I got to go to a couple of Taylor Swift concerts yeah. and I spent the whole time sitting right in front of my four daughters and Taylor was putting on an incredible show. And the best show for me was watching my daughters like the joy that they had. And and uh, you love goodness in the world, man. And so uh, and, and I don't know, we've had a lot of things work out in the, in the Taylor Swift train. It's great to have you here. Thanks, you, Congrats. Bro. Appreciate you. Now, during his opening statement, Pope said nobody in the world has ever seen anything like this. But for fans who were lucky enough to cheer the cats on to a national championship title in 1996, they know Pope's introduction as head coach when he stepped off the bus onto the Rupp Arena floor holding the trophy. Well, that looked familiar. Dozens of former cats in attendance, but also at least one future Wildcat, Mr. Kentucky basketball in the house, incoming freshman. Travis Perry was on the floor for the entire event. Coach Pope even pointed him out to the fans at one point so he could get a huge Rupp Arena welcome, and that he did. Then Pope jokingly said, BBN shouldn't have to worry about Perry entering the portal after a reception like that. We have seen decisions now from a few of the player, last year's players. Aaron Bradshaw committed to Ohio State today, saying Buckeye Nation locking in. And news broke this morning. DJ Wagner has entered the transfer portal. Travis Branham was the first to report that for 24-7 sports. Big Z, Zivana Miravicic, has also entered the portal, according to multiple reports. And another member of the 2024 class has asked to be released 
from his national letter of intent. Five star guard Boogie Fland has reopened his recruitment. So certainly a lot of changes to next season's roster with still more changes to come. We're talking to all the guys on the current team, all the guys that have been recruited and just about every single player in the portal right now. Um, and we're going to find. We're going to we're going to find the guys that fit here the way we play and the guys that will come here and understand what a gift it is to play here at the University of Kentucky. Now, Pope was also asked about scheduling moving forward. He hinted at the possibility of the Cats playing in the Maui Invitational and other events like that, but he also has another matchup in mind. Anybody here down with a game for St. John's? Coach Patino is certainly down. He posted this morning, and I quote, St. John's accepts this year at Kentucky, next year at the Mecca, referring to Madison Square Garden, looking forward to saying goodbye to Kentucky men's basketball, end quote. So still a lot of decisions to be made with scheduling, with the roster, with the staff. We'll keep you updated as Pope begins to make those moves. Now coming up next on BBN Tonight, we're bringing on another national champ. It's DA. We're talking with Derek Anderson right after this.